Greetings, everybody, and welcome to The Effect. This is Army speaking. Today is 6-23-2017 at 7.52 p.m. Central Standard Time. Today we are going to talk about the five love languages. Um, my sophomore year of Bible college, I, uh, it was mandatory to take a marriage and family uh, class, and our textbook was uh, the Five Love Languages, which you see before you by Dr. Gary Chapman. I don't know why they left out the title doc doctor. He is d a doctor. And um, he, and so this, uh, the Five Love, love, <laughs> love Languages is written for adults. And he also wrote one for children, which you can see right here. He wrote one for teenagers. Um, he wrote the Five Love Languages, another book. He wrote the Five Love, <laughs> the Five Languages of Apologies. Um, he's written many books. This man is brilliant, and I am I consider it an honor, a privilege to, to have been able to read his book and to have uh, taken that class in Bible college. Um, in my uh, personal opinion, and uh, no joke, if, if every person in the world, uh, well, every married couple, let's just say were to read the five love languages, uh, it would have a dramatic impact on the divorces in the world. Like, I think it would literally probably cut them in half. Like, that's a pretty bold statement, but that's, that's how I feel about this. It's that powerful, and I've seen it be that powerful. So, um, this is a, it's a, it's a book, and it's a, I, I took an entire semester course in it, on <laughs> one book. And um, I'm going to try to cram all this knowledge in about five minutes. So here we go, the quick summary. See what kind of justice I do. Pick up the book and read is what all I got to say. Oh, yeah, tomorrow night I'm going to be uh, getting back to reading prayer requests. Um, I'll put a link. Hopefully you all remember. Put a link to the, the video where you can leave a prayer request, and then I go in there. I go in the comments, and I, I read your prayers live. So I, I intend to do that tomorrow or Sunday, Saturday or Sunday. So getting back to the book, the five love languages. Here you are. One, two, three, four, five. The first one is gift giving. It's kind of described, the way it was described to us in class was it's kind of like your body. Uh, think of a, a car. A car has a gas tank. And when it's empty, the car doesn't go anywhere. You, you got to keep gas in the car to keep it going. Same analogy to a marriage. You got to keep gas in the, in, the, in, in, the, in the marriage. The gas, what is marriage? It's love. So you have a love tank. In a marriage, in a relationship, you have a love tank that needs to be filled. And when it runs out, then things don't function. Now, the way you keep it full is, is the key here, because not everyone knows this, and I didn't know this. I had to take the class, for heaven's sakes. Still blows my mind to this day. It's just a very simple concept. People speak different love languages. Like some people love to uh, give gifts, and, and when they give you a gift, they're saying, I love you. And they're pouring out every ounce of their being into that gift and saying, I love you. But let's say I don't, I don't speak that language. Um, if you buy me a gift, maybe I'm all shy and I get embarrassed and, you know, it's uncomfortable for me. And, you know, maybe, you know, and it, it, for me, it's not love. It's an uncomfortable situation because maybe I had some screwed up event in my past life or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, moving on. Quality time. That's uh, just simply you want to be alone and, you know, no TV on, no distraction. You know, you go to a restaurant and you're not sitting there watching the TV. My God, there's a TV in every restaurant now, it seems like. Um, <clears throat> so quality time means quality, like just you and your and the person you're in love with, you know, being together, that quality time. But some people may not like that quality time. It might be a little uncomfortable for them, you know. So so you're sitting here, you want this quality time, you want to be alone alone with your mate, you just you want to, you know, you know, be that way, but the person doesn't. And you know, so there's a disconnect in language. Some people, it's words of affirmation. Like some people just love to say, I love you. I love you. And they're pouring out their hearts. But someone else may like, you know, I'm, I'm not into that, that word love. I don't get it. And, and so do you see how we, we you, you can be in a, in a relationship where someone wants to say, I love you all the time. And the other person doesn't really want to say, I love you back. It's, but that doesn't mean they don't love you. Um, the other one is acts of service, um, you know, cooking dinner. You know, there's that old saying, I, I put my love into it. Where do you think that came from? I put my love into it. 
Um, but it, this is how I express my love. It's an act of service. It's a devotion for them. It's not just cooking. They are literally pouring their heart and soul and their love into that food for you. And when they serve it, they, I mean, you can almost have tears in your eyes because they're, they're, they're just giving you so much love. But, and it's sad if, if the person doesn't receive that, you know, because they're just pouring out their heart. And, but maybe for you, it's just, you know, well, you know, I worked all day and you don't work and, you know, cooking's kind of your job thing. You know, maybe you have that attitude. Maybe you're in the kind of relationship where the woman, you know, the wife doesn't um, work and the man works and he just is like, well, you know, he just made me dinner. And so there could be a huge disconnect there where now the woman doesn't feel loved. The wife does not feel loved. And the man doesn't even know what he did wrong, the husband. The other one is physical touch. <clears throat> you know, you want to you wanna cuddle. You know, uh, we're not talking about sex here. Don't go there. You know, if you can, if you want. But we're talking like cuddling, holding hands when you're walking down the street, you know, you're ho holding arms, um, you know, the physical touch. That's how um, some people, you know, express love. But some people don't receive love that way. So are you getting the idea? Um, let me, let's let let's just take a little test here. I, I think um, I'm going to try to explain this a little bit better through an example. So let's have some fun here. Um, I set up this little, I found this little test. The five, five, the, I can't even talk. The five love languages. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was funny. I keep stuttering over that word. Um, and I do have a speech impediment in case you didn't know that. So that's even funnier. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so here's the test. So question number one. Someone I love sends, oh, so you, what's one, oh, so here's a question. Uh, what is more meaningful to you? Someone, someone I love sends me a loving note, text, email for no special reason, or I hug someone. So I, I already know that I'm physical touch, and of course that's me. It's more meaningful to me when I can spend alone time with someone I love. That's that um, quality time, just us. Or do I prefer someone I love does something practical to me? That's the act of service. I'm, I speak this love language. It's more meaningful when someone I love gives me a little gift as a token of love for each other. That's the act of gifts. Or I, I get to spend uninterrupted leisure time with those I love, the quality time. That's more my love language. It's more meaningful to me when uh, someone I love does something unexpected for me uh, to help um, with a project. So that's acts of service. Or I can share an innocent touch with someone I love. That's a... Uh, Physical touch, that's my love language. Um, is it more meaningful to me when someone I love puts their arm around me in public or someone I love surprising me with a gift? Well, that's my love language. Um, I'm around someone I love even if we're not really doing anything. Yeah, that's me. I can comfortably, oh, I, I like both of these. I can comfortably holding hands, high-fiving, or putting, hmm. I'm around someone I love even if we're not, really doing it. I like both of these. Let's see. I can be comfortable holding hands. I think. Oh, I like both of these. I'm, I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm stuck. I don't know. We'll beat this one. All right. Next, um, I receive gift from someone I love or I hear someone. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, really? That's me. Um, I sit close to someone I love or I'm co complimented by someone a compliment. So that's um, words of affirmation. Um, but this is my love language. Um, it's more meaningful, so I get a chance to just hang out or hang out. I hope I'm not going too fast. I'm trying to speed things up. Um, let's see. I hear someone tell me I'm proud of you or someone else in the task. I'd rather – words of affirmation is that one. And that's uh, – anyway, I should stop explaining every single one. Um, um, I get to do things with someone I love. I hear supportive words. Uh, that one. Someone I love does things to me instead of just talking about doing nice things or I feel connected to someone. Oh, that one, definitely. Boy, I, I didn't expect this to be so long. I'm sorry. I'm always trying to get to this test quicker. I hear praise from someone I love. Someone I love. Um, that one. I'm just, I'm going to stop reading out loud and try to get through this quickly. You, you can read along. Oh,
that one. How long is this test? I'm getting bored. Oh, it's only 50% through it. All right. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm not going to go through this test. I didn't know it was so long, guys. Sorry. Um, I thought it would be fun to go through it together, and then you get to see my results, like, you know, technically live but recorded. Um, interesting. So you get the idea. Um, if, if for, for me, this means nothing to me. Sorry. Um, I'm quality time. I'm wards of affirmation. Access service don't mean a whole lot to me. And physical touch does. So I'm I I'm a quality time, words of affirmation, and physical touch. Those are my love languages. Now, if I'm married to someone who speaks the love language of gift giving <laughs> and acts of service, you can see how we don't speak the sub same love language. So I I you know I want to do physical touch. I want quality time. You know I want I want this mushy crap. You know I'm I'm a, I'm a mushy romantic type. Okay, but what if I'm with someone who's more of you know, kind of standoffish, you know, I'm going to give you gifts and I'm going to do acts of service and, you know, and that's how I pour out and show my love to you. Well, I don't get that. That's not my love language. So if I was to, uh, you know, date someone and end up marrying someone with, with these love language, that relationship is, would be headed for complete disaster. I mean, they, you, they're just like, forget it. The, the, I, there's like no hope. <laughs> well, there is some hope, but, but you guys get the idea. Now, the thing is, um, we don't know this stuff. I didn't know it. And ironically, I did marry someone that had the exact opposite love language of me. This actually happened to me. <laughs> it really did. It really did. But we loved each other. But for years, we just didn't connect. And it's just, just a bizarre situation. Um, but we could connect on a spiritual level. And so we had to transcend the physical and go to the spiritual to say, I love you. <laughs> is what we ended up doing. And stay together for a long, long, long time, 28 years, 28 years. Oh, it's a long time. Yeah. So I was in a relationship for 28 years. Single now. Anyway. Um, so, um, and then the thing thing extends to your children. So what if you have a, a boy or girl, you know, son or daughter, and you speak different love languages and this little child's pouring out their heart and you wonder why a child might be attracted to one parent more than the other. Well, it may not just because one's mother, one's daddy. We there is that psychological condition uh, where we are well aware of. Um, but it could also be the the love language they speak. They they feel more love from one parent because they they're in, you know they they say they're in tune. You know they speak the sub language, those kind of things. And then when they become teenagers, um, they're no longer children, so their their language changes. So that's why um, he made a book. Uh, this is for married couples. This is for children, and this is for teenagers. And um, highly, highly, I can't, I can't say enough good things about Dr. Uh, Gary Chapman's work. Just absolutely phenomenal. So, as I always say, as the sun sets and sun rises, as many times as you can. It doesn't matter what your religion or belief is. Pray, meditate, get connected back to true source, God, Creator. Simply be one in communion with Him. And shine like a pillar of light and hunt to the world. And wake up and remember who you are. And that you are a child of God and you are very loved. You are very cared for, even though it may not seem that way at this time. But just know your Father is always there with you. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen.